mesmerizing, isn't it? The well border in the ocean. Well, it looks like I've set the world coordinates to be just 4k from spawn. So I really probably should um, increase the world border first before actually continuing on. How accurate is this world border? Ah, oh, yeah, okay. You're very hypnotic. Whoa. Hello, all you zombies. Today, I need to do the start of a large amount of admin work. There it seems that there's been a few cases of block lag, some of which you probably even noticed while I was actually playing around in the previous episodes. Now, what I need to do to solve this is to actually move the command bo block box, which is currently down below here, whoops, didn't do that, uh, to a location that is far away from the main base here, where the players are expected to be. Now, before I can actually head out 8,000 blocks that way, I need to expand the world. Currently, the world is centered at 0, 0. This is not 0, 0. It's very close to it. 0, 0 is just off the edge of the point over there. Um, and But I need to expand its size. Now, first of all, let's make sure that the world is actually centered on that location. It should be, but let's just make sure. So, border center. Zero, zero. Okay, and then we want to increase its size from about 4k to 8k. Now, that is the distance from zero I want, 8k. What I need is actually a 16k width for it to actually work. And I want to keep it all nice and binary specific and so on. So, that would actually come out to a width of one six three eight four so there we go the world is now four times larger and well, probably yeah about four times larger and the area where I'm going to be placing the command box is just inside the world border this will be important because eventually this point the spawn point will also move out to there to keep those chunks loaded and I'll be teleporting any non creative players that are in that area back to here so that when someone a player dies they'll end up back at spawn and then be teleported here that way players still have this as a spawn point while the real sp game spawn point is way out there there is a few things about this, the iron farm up here will no longer be in spawn chunks, so it will not be constantly working anymore. And a few other things like will probably happen in a similar sort of way. So let us jump out to where I'm going to be moving the command block box and see if we can set up a few things. Teleport to eight one. 3, 6, 100, that's just to keep us above the surface. I am in creative, so I'm not going to die even if I end up in lava. 8136. And we're in the corner of the world. Looks like we're falling. World hasn't generated yet. So, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, looks like I stopped myself just before I hit the ground. Okay, let's just let it load in for a bit longer, and I'll see you in a little bit. There's the world border and the corner. We are 8,000 blocks away from spawn, way over there. And I actually teleported to this position here. So I'm just going to mark that. So we'll just grab a, the nice marker block that they provided. Okay. 
Now this coordinate that I've picked has been chosen after watching some videos by both Slice Lime and Sparks of Game Mode 4 fame. Now the reason this was picked was because it is a in the world border corner and it is a coordinate which is in the 8th by 8th block inside a chunk. So if we look over here we see it's inside chunk 508, 508 and it's the 8th block X and Y in that chunk. Now that's a very special position within the chunk. If you set the world board spawn, the world spawn to the 8-8 the eight, eight block inside a chunk you'll get 17 ch uh, spawn chunks. That, if it's not this block, if it's a this block, you would only get 16 or 16 and 17. Basically this will maximize the number of spawn chunks. Now I may not ever actually use 17 by 17 chunks for the new command block box but it's a good good enough. That should be almost all the way out to that mountain there and actually a bit beyond the edge of the world over there. But this should be a good start. Now let us go to game mode 3 and have a look at what's down below. Okay, things are quite chaotic down here it looks like. We've got a lot of tunnels. We've ooh, There's a cave system here. We've got a bit of lava here. It's pretty messy. If we keep going down, eventually we'll go out the bottom of the ball world. There is the below the base of the world. You can't actually put any blocks here. It's sort of like the lower build limit. You can't stand on anything unless you can fly like I am in creative, in spectator mode. So it's pretty useless. Now let us position ourselves roughly two blocks up, just to be sure, and go back to creative. So game mode. mode. Oh, 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 no, 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 we don't want that. We don't want that. Uh, ooh. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. You cannot breathe solid rock when you're in survival. Okay, let's just... There we go. Okay. So I've just broken a few blocks so we can move around here again. Let's see if we can find that point again. Six. Okay, there it is. So that there should be the bottom of the world. There is the void down below. We'll just mark that. So this here is where we're going to be building our command block box. I could put it up a little higher, but this is pretty good, especially as game mode 4 modules, the one-click ones, like to install themselves right down here, and you'll like to be able to access them to move them about, as I've shown in the previous video. Now let's just clear some space here. So I'm going to just fill the area with the air. So what I'm going to do is, relative to my position, which is standing on top of here. So relative to my position here, fill tilde minus 25 block 1 tilde minus 25. The tilde remember is relative. So tilde 25. Uh, we'll go up say to 10 tilde 25 and we'll put in air. Oh and that succeeded. If it's too much you would actually say that you can't do it and you go and you'll have problems okay things have rendered out rather nicely we've got some water flowing down there so there must be some sort of pool up there we've got lava it's okay we'll get all that sorted out eventually so let us actually expand this a bit further so we'll go we did it to 10 so let's go to 11 to 22 Oh, and there we go, we've got some more gravel falling down. Oh, some water still coming in. Not quite certain what's happening here. Oh no, no, the water's gone. Okay. But we've got another water flow here, turning that lava into gravel. Some gold, some redstone. I don't see any diamonds. There's always bound to be some diamonds, but it looks like we're lucked out. Not that it really matters 
being in creative. So let us continue this. We've got oh, some mobs falling out of the sky. Okay, well, let's brighten this place up. We'll change the lower, the one below the lowest level. Not the bedrock that's at the current ground, but the one above to glowstone. Brighten the place up a bit. Here we go. And we'll change, get rid of this uh, water flowing out of the top here and some of the mobs. We'll change the ceiling, which was 22, the lowest air block that I created just then, to bedrock. And a layer of glowstone below that. one. Here we go. And that brightens the place up enormously. We've got a bit of gravel, we've got a creeper over there. That's okay. We'll just go back to the air. Let's see, we'll go to that one. Make it now one, two. And fill with air, get rid of all this gravel. We got rid of some of the lava, but they're going to flow out again. Now, that should be about three by three chunks. Now this location, yeah there it is, okay we'll just put that bedrock back, put that there, there we go. So there's our center point, this eventually will be world spawn, so and we've got about three by three chunks here, I'll probably need more, in fact I know I'm going to be needing more, so I'm not going to worry about putting in the bedrock walls yet, I will, which will of course also cut off the lava, the walls a bedrock not so much to stop the players from getting here because eventually the players will not be able to get into this area at all because this being world spawn I want to teleport any non-creative players to normal spawn to player spawn so if any player will be in this area they'll be teleported out eventually but the bedrock walls are to stop this lava flow this water and the mobs getting in the bats yeah, and so on. Now, let's see, we'll get some sea lanterns. Here we go. And what I'm going to be doing next is actually marking out the chunks. Now, I want to try and keep each module in their own chunk. So let's see, wherever the chunk numbers on the side here goes to either 15 or to 0, I'm going to be placing a, close, uh, a sea lantern. And that will mark the chunk. So this is one chunk, and that will be another chunk. And I'll go all the way around and do that. Now, this can be a little bit of a problem. Glowstone does not allow a mob to spawn on it, just like bedrock. But mobs can spawn on sea lanterns. Most mobs, of course, will not spawn here because of light levels. So the creepers and the bats and things like that can't spawn here. But slimes can. So And there's bound to be a slime chunk here. So I will be needing to do something special about slimes, and I'll get to that. Excuse me, my voice is getting a little hoarse. In any case, I'm going to work at, it, at this command block box a bit more, laying things out, putting in the glowstone floor, expanding it out a bit, and marking out the chunks. I'll probably put in a couple of extra blocks, but I'll see you in a bit. Hello, creeper. You don't belong here. Yeah, you don't belong here. Yeah, here, you go in the lava. Now this is an unusual site. I think this must have been a spawner at one point. Because I'm getting an effect, but there's no spawner. Interesting, let's just go up here and have a look. Yeah, this was a spawner. Okay unusual. Pretty, but unusual. And welcome back. It's been about a day and I've laid out the command block box, expanding it to five chunks. I've encased it completely now in the bedrock, so no more lava or water. Yes, dark caves nearby. 
Now, everything is running well. I've moved the basic commands of the server. So we've got the anti enderman griefing and the one player sleep modules installed. I've also got a few convenience functions like teleport to the old command box or to the player spawn or clear the sidebar. I'll go through a lot of this a lot more later. On the walls, I do recommend player, uh, that you have a marker showing which is the x, positive x direction and which is the positive z direction because when laying out commands it is important to know that at a glance. So I can just have a quick glance up the wall, make sure I am actually doing things in the right direction and that way I know that this particular block here is the zero zero block of a chunk. So yes, see, if you look on the side here, the zero zero block. So I know that if I'm trying to clone blocks into this command blocks from the old sir, old command box, I can just do so from this block and know it'll appear in the chunk. Or if I'm installing a one click, there's enough height for the one clicks to work. I can just do it here and have them installed into the chunk as appropriate. Now, the new command block box needed two extra commands to set up because we're no longer at the normal player spawn. So if a player dies and we move the world spawn over to here, the, we need to get the players back to the normal player spawn. And that's what this does. What it does is it changes, it teleports any player who is in survival within 200 blocks of this command block to the player spawn. And that's the location of the player spawn. The second one was the other one I was talking to you about before. It's the one to stop the slimes that could be spawning on top of command blocks or on top of the sea lanterns. And yes, I have seen a slime in here. So there is a slime chunk around. So that, when the clock is running, will actually cause the slimes to get teleported away and I send them down well, that's not quite right let's just fix that send them down into the void one at Y 1000 far enough away so they'll instantly despawn in the void so let's just try this shall we first of all we'll need to start this clock here we go this is now actually running I can test that by bringing in a stone block this is swapping between redstone blocks and a stone block so stone immediately becomes there. I could put a command block on there to give me some ticks or something to let me know that it's running. But that's the server hyperclock. That will be the main one that will ensure that the main functions of this server is running properly. So let us try out that anti-slime. Let's just bring up a slime egg. There we go. So we have a slime egg, so any slime immediately despawns, and as you see, it's actually they're actually dying after they're being teleported away. So no slimes on us. So I'll see I'll continue on this work and I'll see you when it's done. <laughs> Oh, oh, hello, uh, welcome back to Ants Minecraft. <coughs> oh, I've been a, a little under the weather in the last week, but I finally managed to finish off that command block box. So let us go and have a look, shall we? Okay, well, first of all, the button. So it's been about two weeks or so. I've been, as I said, I've been a little under the weather, I've been sick, but I'm back now. That sore throat was a bit of a prelude to a bit of flu, but it's all back. I'm okay now. Voice still a little gravelly. As you can see, I've moved over all the command blocks. So we have here the various early game mode for 
things for players so the back grenades the enderman support uh, the dead players and is squid ink we have the I think this is the what is it the better fire no better armor stands and let's see the better fire the uh, the lightning rods the ninja smoke bombs we have here the custom crafter type going away with its doing and three sets of recipes I split up the humongous long one we had in the old command block box into three here so that I don't overload the individual chunks with command blocks I have here the sidebar reporter so let's see the current death count is at 33 for blade master I'm at a 13 we have the kills jawbone still leading the pack there this block is the one that gets replaced by a the command at spawn and it just flashes it to redstone to cycle the the system here to the next lot we have let's just clear that sidebar and this is the revamped achievement mod so this is the server achievements it's using a very special clock based on an ocelot growing up so when this ocelot grows up uh, there it goes it'll tick over the command blocks here and if the achievement has been reached by some player it will launch off and run the achievement mod here to give them the various things such as a timber axe the grave digger shovel and a few quite a few other things so this is all the um, setup of the uh, objectives there's a lot of objectives involved with the achievement mod and this here is one of my pride and joys it's actually a um, the timber mod which you get the axe through the achievement mod over there but this here provides the actual workings for the axe to decapitate trees so hang on let's just get an axe here there we go okay and this here is a hyper clock for the whole of the chunk so any red active redstone in this chunk will be run by that clock it doesn't seem to cause any lag doing it the whole chunk so only those that are going but that are currently a red wool in this chunk is active so these black wool ones aren't actually active they're not actually going to be updated by that fill clock until this command is run which actually turns all those into redstone it will then cycle and then when the condition is false that one there will turn them all black back to black wool and stop the clock so it's a lovely conditional run so these modules only get run when the timber axe is active so if I throw it there it went red the black wool went to red let's just show that again and when the timeout it turns it all off again so the timber mod is not active all the time only when the actual timber command is actually going so that's pretty good let's just get rid of that axe don't want to cheat well, I've already got one though because well, I've uh, only about six people have got the achievement for the timber axe but it's one of the most useful ones there is I do hope to add some more achievements at some point now this is basically the command block box as it stands as you see I've still got a bit of space to work with I can still expand the walls out further if I need to but that will do the job and is the base the command box is now basically moved what I need to do now, however, is go fill in the old command block box. So here's the old command block box. Everything here is basically disabled. They've been turned off. The clock's been stopped. Most of the redstone blocks have been removed. This here is basically no longer required. But what I need to do is I need to get rid of it. I need to fill it all in. So all the way up 
we want to know what that call this block here is so let us go there we go it's going up to 26 so from y1 through to 26 so that's actually what we need to fill in and i want to fill it in with actual real type of world i don't want to just turn it all to stone i like to put in some ore some diamonds some whatever it happens to be found so let us go back and go back and pick up some blocks now that was 64 blocks so what we want is we want to find the location of here so let's see what is this so go to here yes we need to go a bit further because this is still part of the command box Okay, so 8178 plus 64, well, 63, 8244. That sounds right. Okay, let's just fill in this bit. Don't. Whoop. Okay, now we need to go back over there to actually do the job and a hole here here we go here we go okay let's just exit here oh I'm being really clutched today there we go finally okay and let us this is yeah okay here we go clone now these are now loaded because I'm in this area the command blocks area is loaded because it is spawn chunks. So we want to clone from 8178 1 through to 8178 8244. Uh, we'll, jump a, we'll jump it up by 10 first for 8244. We don't want to overload it because if we have too many blocks in that area that we're copying, it will actually not work and we want to jump it to our position plus one to one to the one okay and that should actually do the job oh two minutes here that's what i mean it's too many blocks specified so let's just jump it down a bit okay so that's about that's quite a bit let's go have a look and there we go you can see here it's actually all starting to fill in and it's filling in with the natural stuff so that's pretty good let's just check the other side over here see how see that I managed to get far enough over so did I it looks like I did so let's just just jump down on the here yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that is being replaced. So, let us continue with that work. Let's just find that position again. Let's see if I can get through the hole this time. Oh, no problems that time. Okay, let's stand where we were and repeat the command going up a bit more. So, we did five. Let's go six. And this time we'll go 13, 6. Okay, that's too many. So we'll go 12. That's too many too. 11. Okay. So the box is now disappearing. And we'll just keep on working like that. And remove the whole box. Back to at least at least something that is uh, fairly um, original. So, 12 to 18, 12 to 12, here we go, 18 to 24 to 18, and lastly, well, we go from 25 
to 26. That was the top of the box, 26 to 25. Okay, and that should be the whole command block box gone. So, what's going on up there? Did we have a bit of... Oh no, that's a pumpkin. Okay, that's good. And yeah, it looks like it's pretty good, although we have seem to have lost the torches here that were here. So let's just plonk a, whoop, plonk a few torches down. Oh, oh, looky here. <laughs> Someone's going to have a bit of a find. Let's not make it too difficult for them. First person to find the video can figure out where the diamonds are. Oh, and we've got a bit of a cave in here. A bit of ores. A bit of lapis. Oh, we even got a bit of a... Uh, ooh, a bit of mine shaft as well. <laughs> this is going to be a bit of fun for whoever likes to come in here. Okay. Let's just go to spectator mode. Game mode three, and we'll jump up and have a look in at what we got. So these here, you can see, is the command block box all gone, and we got a bit of mine shaft in there, as well as the ores that we were trying to get. That just leaves me to do a bit of work to clean up. I think it's over here, yeah, just to finish off the this uh, slime farm which is on the edge of the command block box and has now also got access to the mine shaft. So, down here is our slime farm, let's just see what's in the chest here, oh, of course it's full of slime, yes, we've got three of these slime chunk farms, so I'll leave it at that. The command block box is now officially moved. The old one's gone. The ores have been put back. And I'd say that is the job done. Thank goodness. It's been quite a ride. I'll see you again soon. Hopefully with something a little bit more fun. Bye-bye.